What are you doing, bro? Don't, don't, don't do that. See, we're already here at the East Cut, and uh, this time we're not gonna stop here, Carlos. Where the f do I go? Where do I go, bro? That's a that's a good question. Um, should I park it whenever here or should I just head on over there? Uh, we should head on over there, but look, hold on. Well, yeah. yeah, just go. For it. Oh, we need to, <laughs> we need to air down our yeah. tires, bro. <laughs> I was looking at you going crazy because you said I don't see any tire tracks. <laughs> Yeah, we need to uh, lower down the pressure on the tires, so we'll be doing that in a minute uh, before we start heading to that other section over there. You know, you guys, probably you guys have uh, been here before. Once you get to the to this part right here where uh, the east cut, there's actually another way back there where it's a little bit more calm, you know. The water's more calm, it's less murky, and that's where we're gonna be doing our fishing. Um, but before we cross to that side, we got to air down because that sand is pretty loose. Got the ARB tire, de tire uh, deflator. I'm going to see how it, is. how it goes. Our battery died so I decided to cut this little part here at home and I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the ARB tire deflator and uh, you don't have to use this particular model uh, you can use there's there's plenty of uh, models that are similar to this and they pretty much do the same thing as a matter of fact you don't even need this to deflate your tires uh, you can even use a stick using you know whatever works for you uh, the whole thing is that you got to be able to gauge it uh, and be able to see uh, at what tire pressure you're going to end up with. Why? You might be asking yourself, some of you guys are going to be asking, why do I need to deflate my tires? Well, you don't need to do anything, but I prefer to do this uh, because it gives me a bit of an edge when I am uh, going to be going through a spot like, uh, like we're about to right now. For instance, there's a lot of loose sand there, and I feel that it's just a lot better if I deflate my tires. It doesn't just widen it a little bit, but the main advantage is that your tire gets longer, all right? If that makes any sense, it's not that it's gonna get wider so much, but the most important thing is that it's gonna get longer. If it gets longer, it almost has kind of like a sort of like a military tank if you can uh, just imagine that the military tank has those tracks and it can pretty much go over anything so it's just a long track and and it gives you more uh, surface uh, tread I guess or more surface contact I'm sorry with the sand and that's exactly what we're trying to do here so these are normal as you can tell this is a, a very stock vehicle these are uh, um, highway tires all right your standard you know highway tires that you get in, from the dealership when you buy a vehicle um, there is nothing special to this tire right yet you always see me getting into you know some real deep stuff and I'm still able to come out of it and that's normally because well it is a good vehicle it's got four four wheel drive but also uh, because of uh, the tire deflation. So normally I have I run 32 psi. That's the recommended uh, pressure on these uh, particular uh, tires. But uh, I bring it down to about a 12 psi, uh, 12, 14. It all depends. This thing is not exactly accurate, but it it'll give you a mas or menos, you know, so that you can uh, go ahead and, and do that. So I'm going to show you exactly how this thing works. The reason I have this is because it kind of cuts down on the time and um, on the time uh, to deflate and it also is just very convenient to have, all right? So you remove the valve stem uh, uh, cover and uh, you see this brass 
fitting right here. What we're gonna do, it's got two different knobs. You got this one right here, and then you have this one over here. Okay, you see how it free floats right there? So what we're gonna do is we're going to tie this, or I mean, uh, or screw this on to the valve stem, just like so. Okay, you screw it all the way. As far as you can, just like that. But once it's secure, then you're gonna take this secondary one, you're gonna bring it in, and what this is doing, it's going to latch on to the little needle that's in the valve stem, okay? That, that little, uh, I, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it correctly, but it's that little uh, needle that's in there. We're going to unscrew that, and then watch what happens, okay? So we're unscrewing it, boom, it's out, okay? As you can tell, this thing is not very accurate. It's supposed to be reading at about 32, but if you can tell right here, this thing is now popping out. That's because there's air pressure, you know, uh, right here. But if I bring it in, right there it says, it's a, it's a reading about 32, maybe 31.5 uh, PSI. And uh, so once you have it like this and you know that it's working, then what you can do is you can just go ahead and bring this out. Pop this out and it's deflating right there. You can hear it. It's coming, the air is, is coming out. Okay. Obviously, I don't want to do that. You just press it back in. It gets back, uh, uh, it's, the air stops uh, coming out and then you can come back here and then you can check. As you can tell, we went down to about 31 now, okay? Uh, but it'll allow you, this device will allow you to uh, uh, deflate your tires a lot faster and give you a much more accurate reading uh, before you continue uh, to do what I'm about to do. So let's get back to the video. I don't know what the situation is over there. I don't, I don't know if it's a one, like one track to go in and one track to come out. I've never gone back there. Never done this before, so we're about to we're about to experiment here and let's see if it let's see if it happens. Here we go. Well, I see the tire tracks are actually on the other side, but Sam is pretty damn loose. This is extremely loose. This is very loose. Remember everyone, my vehicle is completely stock. I don't have, oh my God. What are you doing bro? Where was the bro? Guys, don't, don't, don't do that. You know, why are you in the middle of the track? Just move out of the way, man. Move out of the way. I'm not trying to be rude, it's just, you get a little, you get through this little adrenaline and the uh, beast comes out, you know? So, uh, yeah, you can be a pisser, you know? Now is it this way or is it the other way? No, I thought that would be good. And these inlets right here, can you, uh, are these inlets, you know, something with that one? Or what? Yeah, right. The right? Okay. All right. Here we go. Looks like the track is this way. And it's just a steady move. Okay. That looked pretty damn simple. Yeah, that, that's, I'm, I'm that's, sure actually, that's true. That's actually the section right there where everybody gets stuck. That, that little part right there uh, that we just crossed right now is is the part where everyone gets stuck when the, the high you know when, when there's a high tide so now I mean we did good we're already here it went pretty smooth the rest should be smooth sailing okay yep we'll find out I see Carlos right now. This guy is a trickster. He does a bunch of uh, fancy little things with his fishing. So I see him doing something a little different to me. Carlos, what are you doing, bro? 
Uh, I'm gonna free line a, a mullet. See, right now what we're doing is uh, we're gonna let this mullet swim and see if a bigger fish wants to eat it. <laughs> swimming or not so I'm gonna I'm gonna let him I'm gonna free line him <laughs> just fell no I wanted to sit here bro I wanted to sit here you see this uh oh look I'll all these right flies here. right here that's nice yeah, so, uh, once again I showed off my less than graceful skills I let Carlos and Michelle do their thing and took a walk to the jetties so I'm walking around here. This is where I find. Perfect. Somebody must have dropped them off here, so I think they'll make a good gift for my cousin. Carlos, I know that you damaged uh, your uh, sandals earlier today. <laughs> so I want you to know I kept this a secret, but I, uh, nice. I bought you these shiny, beautiful sandals, dude. No. I hope it looks like uh, your perfect size five and a half. <laughs> you probably have fungus. <laughs> we noticed an abundance of mullet swimming around. Our live mullet bonanza was not working. Very accurate on the hook tips. It's just nibbling on it. Look at that. I mean, come on, guys. Really? <laughs> like, they're everywhere. Like, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a hard one, but it's all about the luck. Carlos was thinking out of the box and started to improvise with different bait, such as live shrimp and artificial lures. We're gonna need a fish ID. It's got some teeth. It's got a lot of teeth, actually. Uh, sharp ones, too. It's a piranha, and it's got this super yellow very yellow, almost like a fluorescent, like if somebody painted it with, <laughs> with a fluorescent with, marker. With chartreuse uh, paint. Chartreuse? <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. if someone, uh, you know, got a highlighter and started painting on it. You never know what you're gonna get. So this is crazy, it's, it's, it's crazy. I've never caught this uh, fish. It's got a, it's got a, a sharp fin right here. Oh, this is sharp right here. Yep. Oh, it's got bony, a... sharp. Yep. Those little teeth right there. Tomale una, tomale una foto. And uh, let's put it on uh, that, uh, como se llama? Yeah, let's put it on a page and ponerle fish ID. A ver, pero déjame. Que se mire todo el fish, babe. Oh, and it croaks. It it's croaks. croaking? Yes, the fishing was anticlimactic this go around, shrimp. but there's no denying we Isn't had that plenty crazy? of fun. I had like, I had like 15 or 20 shrimp in that bucket. Puro nada, just nothing, was catching nothing. This was the last shrimp, and I even casted it out there with a little jump. <laughs> cause it was just, a, cause it was just the last one. So, today's been a very weird day. We almost said, if we don't catch, we don't eat. 
but uh, I'm glad nobody committed to that because we haven't caught a damn thing. But this is what we're gonna be eating. We're gonna be eating some T-bones. This is what we're gonna have today. So yeah, we're not roughing it out here. You know we never rough it anyway. So this is what we're gonna be doing. Let's see how it turns out. I approve this message. Yeah, I forgot uh, some of the other knives, but we're gonna have to use this fillet knife. We didn't use it for the fish, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but it doesn't matter using it for uh, the steak right here. It's damn good. The only problem is that uh, I forgot the rosemary and I forgot the butter, the salted butter. So we're savages out here. We're just suffering. I think I'm gonna throw it into the sea. I don't think I want this shit anymore. <laughs> Boom! All right. Noise. Noise. Thank you, sir. So now we made it out. Uh, we're heading back along the beach here, and uh, it's a little humid. It's, a little humid. it's low tide, though. We have a low tide. When we came in, there was high tide, so we were driving on the top of this uh, this road over here. But now we can drive, you know, 40 miles an hour, no problem. Check this out. Check this out. See that? Isn't that nice? Noise. Yeah, I don't think it's, we're gonna cut our time in at least half. See, the fishing for today, um, it was super slow. So the thing was that whenever you see a lot of bait, it's so hard for you to catch fish when there's like plenty of bait out there. You, I mean, mullet, like hundreds and hundreds of mullet. Now, we saw some activity in the water where, where this little shrimp was jumping for his life and then a fish of course eating it right so i end up casting i don't we don't have the footage but i end up casting a uh, lipless crankbait a rattle trap and caught the fish that was eating that shrimp and ended up being a lady fish so i mean the area was just not good at all i mean maybe next time we'll have better luck but for now fishing was just horrible so, yeah so but still i'm gonna say yeah just you know to follow up on that uh, <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Are you good. all right? Whip flashes and whip flashes. <laughs> Next time on Coastal GX, our recovery equipment helps a beachgoer get out of a sandy situation. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing, sharing, and liking our content.